Taking a look at semi-floating and full floating axles, what we can see in front of us here is a semi-floating axle shaft where one side of the axle shaft will be splined to the axle side gear in the differential. And then our shaft itself would go through our axle housing, axle tube, to the outboard side where we'll see the wheel bearing cup that this cone would ride in, our outer seal, and a plate to hold all of those in place on the axle housing itself. And then outside of that we see the flange and our studs that our wheel assembly would mount onto. Because the wheel mounts onto this flange we can see and inside of that between the flange and the wheel would be either the rotor or the drum, the brake drum. We can see that we would have to remove the wheel and remove the brake drum for us to be able to remove this axle. This makes it a semi-floating axle design. It's semi, as in floating, only on one of spline sets and supported by a wheel bearing on the other side. If we take a look at a full floating axle design, we can see this big one behind here out of our commercial vehicle, heavy duty truck, and we'll see this spline again on the end of the axle shaft causes it to sit in the axle side gear and so floats in the axle side gear and then the other end here actually gets fixed to the hub but it's not directly supported by a wheel bearing instead this flange mounts to the outer face of the hub and is held there by tapered dowels and studs and nuts and so then we are aligned the axle shaft is aligned concentrically to the hub via the tapered dowels, but the axle sh shaft itself is removable with the wheels mounted to the hub and all of the vehicle weight sitting on the wheels. And so the real difference here is that we can pull a flo full floating axle shaft with the weight of the vehicle on the tires, but in a semi-floating axle shaft, we actually need to remove the wheels or take all the weight off of the wheel, remove the wheel, for us to be able to remove the axle shaft. 